Hello, and welcome to the fifth and final presentation of the online Coursera tutorial. This presentation is split into two additional important components of Coursera, emissions units and registries. We will first start with a discussion on emissions units. In this part of the presentation, we will provide a brief refresher on the offsetting requirements in Coursera, which was originally presented in the second online Coursera tutorial presentation discussing Assembly Resolution A393. We will continue the discussion with an explanation of emissions units and how they are generated, and we'll briefly talk about carbon markets and how someone can access them. Finally, the discussion will go into the eligibility of emissions units under Coursera. So let's begin with a quick recap of the offsetting requirements under Coursera. Through the previous presentations, you now understand the coverage of international aviation emissions by Coursera and how the increase of emissions above the baseline levels, or emissions gap, is distributed as offsetting requirements to individual operators every year from 2021. As you may recall, the formula to calculate CO2 offsetting requirements is defined as the operator's annual emissions multiplied by the growth factor. The formula that was agreed to by the Assembly is simple and can be found in paragraph 11 of Resolution A393. You may also recall how the Monitoring, Reporting, and Verification, or MRV, of CO2 emissions is critical to enable such calculations and required for the proper functioning of Coursera. Now, if an aircraft operator understands the amount of offsetting requirements every year from 2021, then what would be the next step for the operator to do? How does an operator meet its offsetting requirements under Corsair? This slide provides a high-level overview of the process for meeting this requirement. First, ICAO provides the sector growth factor to the states and operators, which is multiplied by the operator's emissions coverage by Corsair in that year. The product of the calculation is the quantity CO2 emissions an operator is required to offset. Second, the operator purchases a number of emissions units equivalent to this offsetting requirement. Each emissions unit is equivalent to one ton of CO2 that was mitigated or verified by an eligible program. I want to stress the importance of the term eligible as it relates to programs or units. This will be discussed later in the next couple of slides. Third, the operator provides evidence to the state of the canceled emissions units. For this point, the ICAO standards and recommended practices, or SARPs, and related guidance are under development, and they will lay out specifically what is needed and the process for how this should be done. Finally, the state validates and records that the operator canceled emissions units and reports this information to ICAO. This will provide the proof that the operator has met its offsetting requirements. So, we just talked about canceling emissions units to meet the offsetting requirements, but what exactly are emissions units? The concept originates from an emissions reduction achieved by the implementation of specific projects. These projects can be derived in various sectors within and outside of the aviation sector. One emissions unit is equivalent to the reduction of one metric ton of CO2. Therefore, one emissions unit represents the reduction of one ton of CO2 as a direct result of the implementation of that project or program compared to the absence of that project or program. In other words, doing nothing, which is also referred to as the baseline emissions. These emissions units are issued by crediting schemes through mechanisms, programs, or projects. A common process for generating emissions units is by calculating the difference between baseline emissions in the absence of the project activity and actual emissions after the project is implemented. This is how our project generates emissions units to be bought and sold in the market and ultimately canceled by aircraft operators to comply with their offsetting requirements under Corsia. To help facilitate your understanding of emissions units, and how they can be used, we would like to share a link to a video developed by the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change, or UNFCCC. It is important to note, again, that emission units are generated outside of international aviation and other sectors. 
feel free to take some time to pause this video tutorial and view the video found through the provided URL, or view it after the completion of this tutorial session, as it is intended to provide you with additional understanding on emissions units. This slide and the following slide provide examples of sources for emission units. The first example is the UNFCCC's Clean Development Mechanism, or CDM. This mechanism allows emission reduction projects in developing countries to earn certified emission reduction credits, each equivalent to one ton of CO2. Another example project is the construction and use of biogas plants for 3,000 households in rural settings. This is an example of a smaller scale project where the implementation will reduce annual CO2 emissions by 16,000 tons compared to the baseline or current activity of generating energy through the use of fossil fuels. After the emission units are generated, what happens next? Well, this is where the carbon markets come into play. Once the emission units are generated, they become available to buyers through a carbon market. Buyers, in this case aircraft operators under Corsia, will need to attain a sufficient amount of emission units to meet their CO2 offsetting requirements, as calculated per the formula explained in the previous presentation. They will then cancel these units, which in turn indicate that these units are being used for the offsetting requirements under Corsia. These carbon markets, or platforms for buying or selling CO2 emissions units, can be run by governments, compliance markets, or run by non-governments, voluntary markets. In addition, it is important to note that similar to other markets, the price of an emission unit is subject to supply and demand, as well as external factors. Historically, carbon markets have adjusted by creating supply to meet demand. Recent prices for emission units or offset credits range from a third to a half of the US dollar. However, prices can also be higher in some voluntary markets where social benefits are included in the cost, which is attractive to some buyers. Please note, however, that the prices here are just an example and do not indicate this will be the price range for eligible emission units, as that price will be determined by the market. These figures are merely a means to provide a historical sample for illustration. Now that we have covered what are emissions units and how they are generated and bought and sold, let's touch on the eligibility component of the emission units. Aircraft operators shall meet their offsetting requirements under Corsia by purchasing and canceling eligible emissions units. However, as mentioned before, programs that generate emissions units for use on the Corsia offsetting obligation must be deemed eligible by ICAO. In this regard, CAPE is undertaking preparatory work to develop recommendations to the Council regarding the evaluation of programs, and potentially project types, that generate eligible emission units. Paragraph 20D of the Assembly Resolution A393 requests the Council to establish, with the technical contribution of CAPE, a standing technical advisory body on the emission unit criteria to make recommendations to the Council on eligible emissions units for use by the Corsia. The criteria to evaluate offsetting programs are very important to ensure the integrity and transparency of Corsia. A significant amount of work and consideration by CAPE has already been undertaken regarding the criteria of determining eligible programs and units. It is important to note that it is not the aircraft operators or the states who will determine which programs and units are eligible, but it is the ICAO Council to make such decisions in the future. The states and aircraft operators will then receive information on the eligible programs and how to cancel these eligible emission units to meet their offsetting requirements under Corsia. The list on this slide identifies the criteria that are recommended to be met by the programs that generate offset credits. The list on this slide identifies the criteria that are recommended to be met at the carbon credit or emission unit level. We have now completed the tutorial on emission units and their eligibility and use under Corsia. Now we will go into a discussion around registries, which are addressed in paragraphs 20F, G, and H, in paragraphs 22C and D of Assembly of the Resolution A393. Registries are generally electronic databases to record and track verified emissions data and or emissions units 
in order to assess compliance with the relevant scheme. Work on the implementation of registries under Corsia is ongoing. CAPE is preparing options for registries under Corsia for Council consideration. As part of the consideration of the options, an assessment of state's readiness is being evaluated in the implementation of registries. Although the scope of the registry under Corsia is still being evaluated and will ultimately need to be reviewed and approved by Council prior to development, this slide provides a sample of some of the functions being considered. Features such as providing records of international aviation CO2 emissions, operators offsetting requirements, and emissions units. One of the important aspects of understanding the Corsia registry system is to have a look at the flow of data or information. In other words, what data needs to go to whom. As the first sequence of data flows shows, we can see that CO2 emissions data for international flights will flow from aircraft operators to states and then to ICAO, represented by the red arrows. Then, the second sequence shows that information will flow the other way, from ICAO to states and from states to operators. ICAO calculates and provides a sectoral growth factor and offsetting requirements to states, and states will provide the offsetting requirements to their aircraft operators. And to complete the cycle, aircraft operators will provide their state the volume or number of eligible emission units used to comply with Corsair requirements. The state will conduct a verification of this information and submit it to ICAO, providing evidence that the offsetting requirements are met under Corsair. Thank you for participating in the online Corsia tutorial session on the emissions units and registries. After completing this presentation, you are encouraged to undertake the illustrative exercise regarding the emissions units and registries. After completing the exercise, you can also review the associated presentation providing a short explanation of the illustrative exercise with solutions. And of course, more information can be found on the ICAO's environment website at www dot icao dot int forward slash env